If you're looking for a spray type burner that's easy to build with off the shelf parts and cheap as chips, I've got the solution for you. Let me show you how it works. Now what I've got here is a uh, air tank from a uh, truck I believe it is. I don't know what the, uh, the thing on the front there is, the sticker, but um, that's where I believe that it came out of. Uh, as you can see at the top up here I have just a, uh, a normal sort of needle valve, common and easy to get from different places and obviously I've put some fittings in where this can connect to a, uh, a compressor. Now this line runs down to the bottom of the tank so it can pick up all the uh, fuel from there. You might be able to see it's a bit darker. That's got the oil in it or the, the uh, diesel, biodiesel, whatever you want to use. This one here is just at the top and that just takes off the air. This obviously controls the fuel and the air pressure is controlled directly from the compressor how much you put in it. This here is merely the, um, the filling port where you um, fill it up with whatever fuel you want to use, be that oil, diesel or anything else. The other one there on this side is just blocked off and sealed up and obviously down here we have a, uh, a level indicator. Obviously not necessary, I believe the ports were there, uh, so I used them, not a problem. Okay, now here we have the business end of the operation. This is just a, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's quarter or an eighth fittings. It's a regular T-piece. On one side the, uh, the air comes in, which is this side, goes straight through. On the bottom there is for the oil and this bit here is just uh, squashed down to make a bit of a nozzle and that's where the, um, the oil sprays out. Now there's nothing really tricky about these, they're just the normal compression type fittings, um, all just screws apart, there's nothing special or anything in there, any nozzles or whatever, it's just the air and the oil combining, just um, you know, spray it out that nozzle tip there pretty easy um, I don't know what else I can explain to you about it that's all it is it's a t-piece we've got air in this side fuel in that side and an outlet the only nozzle is it's just squashed down now obviously you can vary that to you want what you want I've also put a MIG tip in here um, uh, as a smaller type of jet which you could do if you only had a very small um, heat output requirement but that's basically the business end of it again it's just the air comes in uh, that side the fuel comes in the bottom you might be able to see it oh, there somewhere uh, it's a bit darker and that's basically it it's as uh, simple as cheap and as easy to construct as, as you could ever make it I think Now, to run this, all you have to do is connect to the airline. I'm running this at about 15 to 20 pounds pressure. There is no right or wrong. You don't have to do anything specifically. You can adjust it to what you need. The air pressure is controlled by the regulator on your compressor and the needle valve controls the fuel. You just merely adjust it to whatever mixture that you want, uh, you know, to, to give you the burning that you want. Uh, obviously you'd need less if you were uh, less fuel if you were using diesel because it's thinner and you'd probably need to open it up a bit more with um, engine oil or veg oil because that's obviously going to be more viscous. Um, nothing else really I can explain to you more than that. The, the oil uh, where the um, needle valve is, the oil line goes right to the bottom so the air pressure forces it out and then the air side just bleeds straight off. If you wanted to um, have, you know, more control or easier control, you could possibly put another needle valve here but um, the reality is it, it doesn't really need it. So, you know, 
I like to keep the complication to a minimum and that's basically it. Adjust the air compressor, the airflow on your compressor with your regulator. If you don't have one then you could put in a needle valve and um, that's basically it. You could use um, really any sort of um, tank if you had an old LPG tank or something and you could also pick up the fuel from the bottom. Again it doesn't really matter as long as one side is pushing the fuel in and the other side you've got air that's all there is to it as you might be able to hear I've got the air running so I will um, give this um, a bit of uh, fuel and make a hell of a mess around the backyard uh, showing you how it sprays out you people better click the like button whether you like it or not for this I just make sure that's wound in will probably help Okay, open the oil a bit, and there you go. And as you can see, you can have a very fine mix, or you can have a very rich one. Now that's on straight veg oil. It's not broken down or anything like that. I'll turn this a bit this way. It is, um, it is just straight veg oil with nothing in it. So as you can see, it does spray a pretty fine mix and it's controllable. That's how you do it. Now one thing I get asked about all the time and I keep answering and people keep asking. They always ask how much fuel does something use? Now, how much it uses all depends on how much heat you want. If you want 10 kilowatts an hour, it's going to use 1 litre of oil an hour. If you want 100 kilowatts an hour of heat output, it's going to take 10 litres of oil. It all depends on what you want. These things are not fixed, they are variable. You can adjust the amount of heat you get out of this by basically upping the, the air pressure and then upping the amount of fuel. There is no fixed limit. It will also depend on how much that you have that little end crimped down and how much it sprays. So that's the first one. The second one I'm going to foresee is people asking how much air does it use. I have an 8 cubic foot um, compressor, it keeps up with it but it keeps it working at the same time. So again it will really depend on the nozzle that you're using, how much air pressure that you're running and basically how much fuel you're putting through it. It's all a fixed thing uh, as far as the relationship but it's variable in the heat output. So please don't ask me any questions about that, they've already been answered. Okay, so once again, I'll give you a look at the fuel spray, how that works. Just open it up a little bit. Oh, put it down. And there you can see, it goes from a little bit or a lot, just right down to a very fine spray. Again, that in there a little bit, I think that or you can put in a whole big spray just depends on what you want okay you can probably see a little bit of oil pooling there in the mouth of the uh, tube where it's condensed um, so it does show you at least that it does um, do it. Now there's no other pressurization or nozzles, just that one on the end there. So that's basically how it works. Now I'll give it a fire up and uh, show you that side of it. Now everybody on the net seems to have a, uh, a gas torch. For some reason I can't find where I'm buried mine. So I'm going to use the, uh, the primal old thing of a stick on a rag and I'll light it up from there. Okay, so give it some fire, some fuel.
when I tell you the, uh, the flame is burning completely clean, there's no smoke, there's no oil spray, it's just burning beautiful with just that hot warm air smell and a bit of a, an aroma of fish and chips being that I'm using veg oil. Another ripper. spraying in and due to the heat coming from the tube it's just self-igniting. It will sustain like that as long as there is fuel. Uh, if you had this in a furnace it would obviously be a lot quieter but again this is just for demonstration to show you how it works. someone's punched you out for being a moron. You will get yourself cooked. So again, just have a little bit of brains and work it out in a different way. Thanks for watching!